So this was definitely not how we thought Tesla was going to start activating faster charging speeds on the Cybertruck. Ever since the beginning, Tesla had said that the Cybertruck was going to support more than 250 kilowatts, but that's pretty much all anyone's been able to get because of the charging infrastructure that Tesla currently has available. A few people realized that they could take their Cybertruck to Electrify America stations, and if it was working, they could get it like up to 330 kilowatts, which is pretty nutty, but I'm going to dumb down charging stations a lot for the sake of this video. I understand that there's a bunch of details I'm missing, but for the sake of keeping things short and concise and simple, basically all DC fast charging stations have two parts. There's a dispenser and there's a cabinet. The dispenser's job is basically to have the cable, have the adapters if needed, or a card reader. It's basically the part that the customer interacts with when they pull in with their EV. You grab the cable from the dispenser and the dispenser's job is to keep that cable cool and make sure that power is getting into your vehicle at the proper speed. There's a lot of basic things I'm leaving out, but the back end is the cabinet, and its job is to supply enough power for all of the dispensers, and so far, Tesla has started rolling out a lot of V4 dispensers, but they have not rolled out at this time any V4 cabinets, which means while there may be superchargers that look more futuristic and look like V4s because they have these upgraded dispensers, so far, all of them still have the old-fashioned V3 cabinets that Tesla's been putting at all of their superchargers for the past four or five years. Because of this, that's why all of these V4 superchargers are still only able to output 250 kilowatts. And a lot of people were confused. Like, why doesn't Tesla start rolling out version 4 dispensers? That way they could charge the Cybertruck faster and they could also charge non-Teslas at higher voltages like Lucid's and Hyundai's and Kia's. All of them are pretty much stuck at 50 kilowatts, 90 kilowatts, even at these V4 stations, despite the fact that those dispensers are optimized for higher higher voltages, the cabinets on the back end are not, which is why a lot of non-Teslas have to sit a lot longer at superchargers and can't charge very quickly. So we thought for a while now, like, okay, well, for whatever reason, Tesla's not rolling out any V4 cabinets, so we gotta wait until they roll out those real, true V4 superchargers before the Cybertruck can actually charge quite a bit faster. But then, someone plugged into a V4 supercharger that I've actually been to in the Bay Area. It's a pretty nice location, but they noticed they plugged in and started getting like 320 kilowatts into their Cybertruck. This was the fastest anyone's ever charged at a supercharger before. So they went into service mode and realized that the battery pack was still split in two. So it was still operating at like sub 400 volts, which means this was not a true V4 supercharger. It still was a V3 cabinet on the back end. But then one of Tesla's lead engineers, Wes, came in and commented that yes, they are actually rolling out an experiment at a few select V4 stations that again are more like V3.5. That's what they're calling them because the dispensers are different from a typical V3, but on the back end, it's still a V3 cabinet. And he said that they're experimenting with the concept of charging at higher speeds simply by pushing way more amps into the vehicle before. So a lot of us know about EV fast charging as in kilowatt rating. So like my EV peaks out on 170 kilowatts, long range Tesla's peak at like 250 kilowatts, and the Cybertruck is supposed to be able to charge over 300 kilowatts. And, and how you figure out that kilowatt rating is your voltage voltage times your amps. So if the voltage is low, because these are V3 cabinets, the only other way to get up to 320 kilowatts is to just dump an insane amount of amps. And Wes is saying that these new upgraded V4 dispensers are capable of supporting way more amperage, even at that lower voltage, which allowed the Cybertruck to charge as quickly as it did. So we didn't know this was something Tesla was going to be doing with the Cybertruck, but it definitely got a lot of gears in my head turning. I mean, yes, obviously running that many amps through a dispenser. There's a lot more inefficiencies involved. It's definitely a way to lose a lot of power through the charging process. Obviously, the far better solution would be to actually have high voltage stations because when you're charging at that higher voltage, you can run a lot less amps, which means there's less energy loss, less heat loss, less active cooling that has to go on. So the more efficient way to charge the Cybertruck for sure would be for Tesla to actually roll out V4 superchargers that are upgraded at the cabinet and dispenser level. And I I hope they end up doing that. I'm sure they will do it eventually, but seeing this one little experiment makes me wonder if there's a reason perhaps Tesla has started rolling out a lot of new sites with V4 dispensers, even though they're still V3 cabinets. Maybe Tesla has discovered that they could roll out V4 cabinets, but they're just way more expensive, and maybe they're trying to keep the charging infrastructure costs as low as they can. I don't know what the genuine reason is. That would be my guess, is that they can just build out V3 cabinets for pennies on the dollar, so that's why they keep rolling 
them out. So maybe Tesla is willing to eat some of that charging loss and put up with all of the extra amps and extra heat and all of that additional energy loss if it results in the charging station itself being substantially cheaper to roll out. And if that's the case, then it makes me wonder like, okay, maybe in a few short months, Tesla's actually going to be able to fast charge all these cyber trucks at well over 300 kilowatts, assuming you go to a V3.5 station with the upgraded dispensers and all of that. And that got the gears in my head turning even more like, you know, Tesla's already having kind of a hard time selling the Model X and especially the Model S. Now that the competition in that premium EV space is really heating up, a lot more people buying Rivian R1S's in that pricing segment. And now Lucid coming out with the Gravity, which is going to have more range. It's more efficient than a Model X and it'll eventually be around the same price regardless with more storage space on the inside. Lucid's also going to be adopting NACs in the not too distant future. So there's just less and less people every quarter buying the Model S. They're probably looking for ways to improve upon it. Like how can we make the Model S better? And I'm thinking like, hey, the Model S and X are already on this older 400 volt architecture. Maybe they just need to upgrade the battery management system and the active cooling that goes on a little bit. But I think there's a decent chance actually that if they do plan on to keep rolling out more V3.5 superchargers that can support up to like 900 amps, maybe it's time to bring some of that tech to the Model S and X. They already got pretty big battery packs at 100 kilowatt hours. And if they could access these V4 dispensers and start charging the Model S at like 320, 330 kilowatts, that would actually give some people a better reason to opt for the Model S over the Model 3. Because right now, the Model 3 has just gotten so good with the ambient lighting, the new performance upgrade. It's got the ventilated seats, the rear mounted display, all that great acceleration and the upgraded suspension and all that. There's so few reasons for people to pay double for a sedan simply for, you know, the hatchback and slightly more range, but really not a lot. We're talking 360 miles of range on the cheapest Model 3 available after the tax credit versus 400 miles of range. So only 40 miles further for, I guess, all wheel drive, quicker acceleration and a hatchback. It's a great car. Don't get me wrong. I love the Model S, but it's definitely having a hard time justifying its market right now. And I think it could benefit a lot from a big range boost. Maybe that means stuffing some more cells in there. And if you can't do a range boost, then maybe taking advantage of all of these new V4 dispensers that are still technically outputting at the lower voltage architecture, which we know the Model S and X are already optimized for, you could start seeing some normal Teslas like sedans and crossovers exceeding 300 kilowatts, which would be really fun and exciting because it could substantially reduce the amount of time it takes to road trip in an EV. And also important to keep in mind from what we learned at the Cybertruck's charging session, even though yes, it's the fastest supercharging session yet at 320 kilowatts, you can see right there on the display that that still only translates in an inefficient vehicle like the Cybertruck to like 800, 900 miles an hour. So it really doesn't necessarily mean that you are getting back on the road faster than any other Tesla, like compared to the rear wheel drive long range Model 3, that's getting four and a half miles per kilowatt hour compared to the Cybertruck's 2.7. Most of the time, it's actually more like 2.5, 2.4 with those bigger wheels. But thanks to the extreme efficiency in the Model 3, that caps out at only 250 kilowatts, but that translates more to like 1,100 miles an hour instead of the Cybertruck's 800 or 900 miles per hour. So while it's easy to get obsessed with the actual current going into the vehicle, it's important to keep in mind like how much mileage is actually being added back per minute, which right now I think the Model 3 long range being the most efficient is actually the record holder for Tesla at the moment. But if we could get another more efficient vehicle like the Model S, maybe if they did a rear wheel drive variant that could boost it to 420 miles of range perhaps, just throwing a random number out there, get that vehicle to more like 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour and then start charging at 320, 330 kilowatts and you'll have some pretty insane amount of mileage added back into the battery pack in a very short amount of time. So I'm sure Tesla's probably having these kinds of discussions right now, like what do we do with the Model S and X to make it better? The Model Y refresh is right around the corner. I'm sure they're focused on that right now. But once the Juniper refresh drops, I think the next big point of attention for the vehicle lineup at least should be how do we justify the Model S and X assembly lines? Because there's probably not going to be enough people buying them to warrant mass producing them at the scale they are right now because they're just not enough people buying them. What do you guys think? Should Tesla just scrap the Model S and X and decide that's yesterday's technology? Let's change that part of the factory into making roadsters or do you like my idea? Faster charging Model S's and X's? Obviously upgrading them to the higher voltage architecture would be great, but I'm just looking at maybe the cheapest path of least resistance. Keep the voltages the same and just improve the cooling a little bit because if it's possible, 
possible for them to accept more amps at the superchargers then they could be charging much much faster but feel free to let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below and thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly it seriously helps us out a ton as does just watching these videos so thanks again have an excellent rest of your day